G'day again, Game Rat community. I'm here at Gamescom for day number two. So we're here speaking with Brendan Lansdale from The Bornless. He is the uh, lead game developer, I believe. Head game development. We wear many hats because we're a smaller studio. So level designer, generalist, a little bit of everything. Okay, so we've got the jack of all trades here from The Bornless. So uh, yeah, welcome to Cologne. Now, how's the experience been so far for you guys? Um, it's my first time out of country from the, the United States and it is phenomenal. I love Germany so much, honestly, it's great. So we've got a, a pretty big lineup here, even uh, us checking out the game ourselves. It's uh, it's about a two hour wait. Was that something you guys expected or what's the reception been like so far? I wasn't sure what to expect, to be honest. Um, I've been to a few different events, much smaller scale. Uh, we, it was, you know, pretty steady all the way through. This is the first time we've revealed this game mode, though. So we weren't sure what to expect, but it's uh, it's uh, all our expectations have been exceeded, I'll tell you that. Unreal. So this is a, a bit of a spooky one, this one. So um, maybe talk us through, like, what can players expect? Like, what is the Bornless? So the Bornless is a PvPVE extraction shooter, and I know, you know, it's a cliche terms. We've heard it before, uh, but where we differ is instead of uh, more of an open map doing what you want, we have it more objective based. So when you go in, you are here to complete a ritual called the Bornless Ritual, and the comic tells a little bit about it. <laughs> uh, but play eight players or eight teams of two, sixteen players fight on a map over totems and gates. And the objective is to summon, defeat demons, and take their powers to hunt the rest of the players on the map. Okay, so essentially, what you've got, uh, you've got a bit of an option as a player. You can either try and to try and make a stop to the ritual, or you can invoke it yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so what, what, what's it like to be the Bornless itself? Like, uh, what sort of powers can people expect to have? Is it quite overpowered? Or? Yeah. So right now, it's in quite an overpowered state. Once you become the demon and you're hunting the other players, you really feel like you are the hunter. Um, the players have extractions they have to get to and you just chase them down across the map. Uh, we will eventually have many different demons, but at the moment you play as Oribus, um, who has been our first demon for two years now. Um, we've got a few more, uh, and each demon has a different set of abilities uh, to kind of cater to the lore and the story behind them. And what we do is we really tie the lore into everything that we do. It's very much a story-based game. It just happens to be in a multiplayer setting. So, you know, if you read about the lore, you'll learn that from the, the Lesser Key of Solomon, the books that we pull information from, a lot of those tie into the abilities of the demons. Okay, great. And so what, what would you say uh, for the team, what was the inspiration behind the game? Oh, the Lesser Key of Solomon, for sure. A, a few different other things, um, obviously, uh, HP Lovecraft, you know, Lovecraftian horror is, is a big one, as you can tell by the, a lot of the lighting and, and the art direction of the game. Uh, but the actual demons in the story come from a book called The Lesser Key of Solomon. Uh, it's also known as the Ars Geisha. It's a little bit lesser known term, but it's, uh, it's actually a book of uh, 72 different demons and how uh, yeah, King Solomon uh, like conquered them. Okay, wow. Well, yeah, that, that sounds pretty grim. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, and, the, and the game is in sort of three phases each mm -hmm. round, so, so players can expect that they'll, uh, they'll be going into the matchmaking, they'll be going through these three phases, and then they can kind of, uh, like it's a rinse and repeat sort of thing. But what are the, uh, what are the phases? So there's the loot and extract, which is like the basic kind of gets you into the game mode, and then there's the invoking the ritual. So as I mentioned earlier, there's totems and gates around the map. Collecting the skulls, the incense skulls from the totems will allow you to activate a gate, and activating a gate is how you get a sigil after you defeat the demon. So it's kind of collecting relics and, and um, kind of objects to complete the ritual, and that's how you become the demon at the end. Okay, and is this the first time we're, like, you've announced this game? or uh... so We've done, uh, we've announced it before. We actually are on Steam. Uh, and at this moment, I believe we're around 250,000 wish lists. Wow. So we're doing pretty solid, but this is the first time we've shown this game mode. Um, in the past, we tried out different types of game modes. We had a 2v2 game mode. We had the original Oribis game mode, the demon that you play today. Uh, it was quite different from what we have now, uh, but people liked it, it kind of stuck, and so we kind of huddled down and worked on getting a, a version that really represented what the story actually is. Okay, so I mean, we talk about you've got a lot of a lot of wish lists on Steam and mm -hmm. stuff. So obviously, the community is quite heavily involved, and they're, they're very invested in this. So could you maybe touch on like what uh, what kind of influence has the community had on the direction that you guys have gone uh, in the lead up to launch? Yeah, actually, believe it or not, um, one of the like the mottos that we go by is 
even though we're making the game, the game is for the community, right? It's what they want to play at the end of the day. Otherwise, how is the game going to flourish? Uh, so we've held a few tournaments of the previous game modes in the past. And the reason we're on the fourth iteration of the game mode is because of the feedback that we got from players. Uh, you know, they came back in November. We did a big play test where we brought around 10,000 people came in and uh, they, they loved it, they enjoyed what was there, but they expressed what they were looking for, really, and that's what this game mode is today that you'll see. I mean, that's just the beauty of the gaming community, isn't it? Okay, well, it's been great talking to you. So uh, the Bornless is coming out uh, early access uh, end of this year, so when, so when can we expect that? Yeah, we're looking at a, uh, a larger public play test at the end of this year, another set of feedback. Obviously, what we're showing today is still in alpha, so we've got some stuff to work on. Uh, we've already gotten some great feedback from today. Uh, but large play test then, looking at early access approximately beginning of next year. We'll see how things go. Um, no hard date set in stone. Um, it may come earlier, may come you know, a little later, but uh, yeah. Well, I mean, the good thing is you have to wait a little bit for them. So yeah, yeah. it's been great talking to you, Brenton. So thanks yeah. for your time. Absolutely. And uh, the Bornless will be out uh, end of this year, maybe start of next year. So keep an eye out for this one, especially you spooky fans, because uh, this one will really get your heart racing. But uh, yeah, stay tuned. We'll have more Gamescom coverage throughout the next couple of days.